want to say a few words about um, the uh, so, some recent advances, so, some recent new new things that uh, have have come out in the NIOSH Manual of Analytical Methods. Uh, this this slide just shows a, a very brief history. Um, the first edition of of NMAM um, only consisted of of a few methods. Uh, there was a, a flurry of activity in the 1970s and early 1980s to produce a number of, of methods that were, um, were, 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 were generated in order to support, mainly to support OSHA regulations in the U.S. Um, and then the, you can see that the third, fourth, and fifth editions um, are as we, we've we've been dealing with the with, with new methods in the fifth edition since 2007, and there's uh, now several hundred of, of these methods. Although some of them are getting rather long in the tube, some of the uh, this is a list of some of the newer methods, and you can you can go to the NIOSH uh, website and and click on uh, the, the click on NMAM, and you can uh, s see more details on on these for yourself. I'm just going to highlight a few of these. In this talk, um, some of the some of the newest methods um, are summarized here. We've got uh, new methods based on inorganic uh, new methods for inorganic acids, uh, based largely on the, the on methods developed at uh, IFA in in Germany. Um, there are some new methods dealing with uh, elemental analysis and. Um, a revised method for metalworking fluids, and then um, use of uh, a capsule sampler for uh, gravimetric analysis, which is um, which, which should be published imminently. Uh, a, a couple of years ago, we the the uh, we we came out with a with the, the the institute came out with a recommendation to. Um, to analyze everything that goes into the sampler, so uh, you're not just analyzing what's collected on the filter, but but rather um, the uh, what what is collected on both filter and inside walls of, of the sampling cassette. Um, more recently, a, uh, a a design for a a soluble insert, which is comprised of a cellulose acetate capsule attached to a mixed cellulose ester filter allows you to collect all of the um, all, all of the particles for subsequent uh, analysis within this capsule and then you can uh, then analyze in toto um, what, what you have uh, obtained in, uh, in e either personal or, or static samples the uh, the gravimetric, the, the, the gravimetric uh, capsule has actually been around for, for quite some time, and uh, has has been used as as a as a method, say for example, by uh, IRSST in Quebec for for some time. So we uh, then did some further um, characterization of this uh, in order to produce a, a a NIOSH method that's that's essentially based on the IRSST protocol. Um, then, uh, more recently, we have the the uh, use of a of a soluble capsule, which which can then be just taken out and, and subjected to extraction or or digestion for subsequent elemental analysis, and it, and it greatly simplifies the overall sampling and analytical procedure. Uh, just a few um, figures of merit for the gravimetric. Method based on the use of capsules, are, uh, the PVC capsules on a PVC filter are shown here. The uh, detection limits are, um, say, uh, a factor of two or three higher than what one obtains on a on a uh, on a PVC filter alone. However, the the uh, capacity is much is, is much greater. Um, you can you can sample um, much more material than you can. On, on, a, on just a filter. And then uh, with uh, Martin Harper, uh, we um, have done a fair amount of work to try to characterize the use of the, the soluble 
inserts, and these are some. These are just uh, some example results from a uh, an inner laboratory study that was done um, with with the aid of of some samples that that were uh, prepared by uh, Dr. Thomason in Norway, where um, for uh, for given for a given loading level, um, we had we, we were able to to obtain a very tight um, inner laboratory relative standard deviations for for several um, for several elements, and then some uh, in in subsequent work in order to obtain some performance data for uh, as as many elements as as possible that are of interest in industrial hygiene chemistry. Um, these are results from inner laboratory results from uh, spiked um, solucert uh, what um, filters, which are there. There are two companies that are producing these these uh, these inserts, SKC and Zephon, and they have very similar names. We uh, we've we've used. Both we've used both in our studies anyway. This this particular study utilized the uh, the the um, equipment from from Zephon. Um, suffice it to say that the the uh, per, the the uh, performance was was very very good for the vast majority of elements that were studied at at uh, at various loading levels that were meant to to be of uh, relevance for um, uh, below and above anticipated uh, occupational exposure limits. Only only a few um, elements did not meet the uh, the EN four A two accuracy or, or uncertainty um, criterion. Um, I mentioned the uh, inorganic acids methods, and I. I um, as, as I mentioned, these were based on, on uh, the methods that, that are published in the in the MAK series uh, in Germany, and um, these methods are consistent. Uh, they were developed uh, based on these methods. We also developed uh, a, a three-part ISO standard, um, and uh, Dr. Dietmar Breuer um, was the leader of of, of these efforts. Um, Dr. Thomason discussed a uh, collection of HF. Um, when you collect HF, you, you, you've got to uh, also um, think about uh, particulate fluorides. And so the sampler entails a, a pre-filter and then an impregnated filter. And the particulate fluorides are collected on the pre-filter, which, which is then um, analyzed in, in total. You, you must include the wall deposits. And this is actually easily done by by, uh, um, by use of a within cassette extraction, which um, has been used by INRS for many years. And then uh, a, a uh, an impregnated filter, a filter impregnated with <clears throat> with uh, base that um, is then um, analyzed for. Uh, a, for assessing the, the HF concentration, so that, uh, and then here are the performance data for for the for HF and for fluoride that the filters would be uh, would be analyzed separately um, for various concentrate ver and, and uh, you can see that the uh, these are expanded uncertainties um, that are that are quite acceptable. In the case of, of HF at uh, at high relative humidities, there is a there, there there is a negative bias as the humidity goes up, but it is a correctable bias. So um, you can you when you when you measure humidities of, of uh, say 65 to 70 percent and above, um, that it is um, it is. Uh, a, a relatively simple matter to correct the result um, for the humidity effect. For um, for volatile inorganic acids, the um, the method entails uh, also a pre-filter and an impregnated filter. The pre-filter there is simply 
to filter out any, any particulate matter that might otherwise uh, interfere with, the, um, with, with what's collected on the impregnated filter. And again, in this, in, in this case, um, for hydrochloric, hydrobromic, and nitric acids, uh, very, very good figure, analytical figures of merit with uh, low expanded uncertainties. And then for the um, non-volatile acids, uh, sulfuric and, and phosphoric, um, here there's no pre-filter. We're, we're uh, just collecting um, on a quartz fiber or PTFE filter. And, uh, and again, um, good analytical performance over um, analytical ranges shown, which are, again, relevant to, to uh, industrial hygiene applications. Um, we have a, a number of new biomonitoring methods that uh, have, have, have been released and, and there are others that are in the pipeline. Here's just a, a, a few examples. Um, toluene in blood uh, and then various uh, biomarkers in urine to, to us, to, that can be used to assess uh, exposures to things such as toluene and benzene and uh, one bromopropane and uh, MEK, what have you. Uh, a lot of these um, methods um, are, uh, ha have been in the pipeline for a long time and, and uh, we're, we're doing our best to, to uh, actually get these released to the public. So I mentioned that apart from some of the draft methods that are um, that are in the pipeline, such as for, pe for pesticides on wipes, um, VOCs and semi-volatiles by capillary GC, canister sampling, which uh, uh, my colleague Ryan Leboeuf is, is working on. He's in the audience, and I'm thankful for his efforts in that area. Uh, we also have some <coughs> um, efforts to publish uh, new draft chapters in order to update a lot of the information in the, in the, in the chapters that precede the, uh, the, the methods themselves in NMAM. And um, so there's a lot of in interest in, in direct reading monitors. We do have, we have new guidance from NIOSH on, on the evaluation of direct reading monitors, but it would be also, it, it would be good to have uh, some, some further guidance on, on the use of, of uh, direct reading instruments for screening purposes. And then uh, also uh, guidelines on on, uh, on analytical performance for um, biomonitoring methods w would also um, be of interest. So um, with that brief overview, I um, want to uh, thank Davey Reset and and uh, and his colleagues for inviting me to this this absolutely fantastic conference. Um, I. And I must uh, also acknowledge my colleague, Dr. Breuer, and uh, at, at IFA, and uh, my and, and uh, colleagues at, at NIOSH, with with whom uh, much of this work has been carried out. And thank you very much for your attention.